Growing up in New York taught Lenny Wilkins basketball lessons that would last a lifetime. He went to my alma mater, which was Boys High School in Brooklyn. I only knew one way to play, and that was hard. When I was growing up in Brooklyn, we played on the playgrounds quite a bit. And back then, I mean, they wouldn't let you play if you couldn't pass or rebound, make the plays. Lenny Wilkins was a tremendous star, very, very gifted, a very driven kid. He worked his butt off to get what he did, and he wasn't a guy who looked to take shortcuts. That work ethic picked up on the streets of Brooklyn brought Wilkins success both on the courts and sidelines of the NBA. In the lineage of point guards in New York, he's underneath Koozie, but he's part of that great tradition of the New York point guard. You are talking about a player who knew how to use what he had. And what he knew he had was that beautiful move to the basket, and he worked real hard to perfect it. One thing about Lenny, he was left-handed. You knew he was going to go left, and you couldn't stop him. He was able to set other players up while we were focusing on trying to stop his penetration. So we all knew that eventually he would go to his left hand, but stopping him was an altogether different story. He was a real reader, and that's when you knew right then and there, it was very obvious that this kid's going to be a coach. The player coach of the Seattle Supersonics, the leading playmaker in the NBA, Lenny Wilkins. It's a cliche about being a coach on the floor. That's what he was. And he could get people to play together. He could get people to understand what they needed to do to win a game. People were ready to listen to Lenny Wilkins whenever he spoke. He becomes a coach. He's the player coach at age 32, and we don't see that anymore. You know, we function as a team, so we, we lose as a team, and we also win as a team. You have to play and be effective and be a teammate, but then you also have to be the authoritative figure when it comes to telling guys what to do. He said he knew how to talk to people and get them to listen and follow through. Lenny Wilkins was able to pull that off, and I'm not surprised because he was a demanding player. and He was also a demanding coach, and I think that's uh, one of his great qualities. Wilkins eventually moved to the Sonics' front office, but when the team stumbled to a 5-17 record to start the 1977 season, the Brooklyn point guard reclaimed his spot on Seattle's bench. The move led to one of the most remarkable turnarounds in league history, as Wilkins led Seattle to the 77-78 NBA Finals, where they lost in seven games. Imagine that going from 5-17 and 17 to being in the NBA Finals. The next year, Lenny coached the Sonics to their only title, securing his place among the sports legends of the Pacific Northwest. You go out to Seattle, he is like Mr. Seattle when it comes to basketball. Yeah, I have good fans there. Oh, you were yeah. by far my favorite yeah. coach. Lenny paced NBA sidelines for 25 more years, and while there were no more championships, Wilkins did win his place alongside the all-time coaching greats, including the greatest of them all. He's a teacher. And then when the big guy puts the ball on the floor, one, two, dribble, whoever's on top, be on it. See, that's what I like about Lenny. He's a teacher, and he's got the patience, and he gets his point across. If you see your guy starting to hang around on a double team, don't get so far up ahead, same way you can be here. And when he moved past Auerbach on January 6, 1995, it was entirely appropriate for Wilkins to light one of Red's trademark victory cigars. Ladies and gentlemen, the winningest coach in NBA history. He's the second person inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame, both as a player and as a coach, John Wooden being the first, Bill Sharman being the third. There are only three now. Brooklyn's Lenny Wilkins, a legendary NBA player and coach, a truly remarkable son of the city.